And it's my pleasure to introduce you to the 27th President of New Mexico State, Dr. Gary Carruthers. Thank you very much. Thank you and welcome to everyone. Before I start, I want to thank Mac Boston for his great 10 years of service to New Mexico State University. He did a wonderful job. <laughs> Mac. And I, I particularly like to highlight the good work that he's done in academics and in community service and building our athletic programs here. So we're proud to have had Mac Boston with us for 10 years. But at this time, I'm delighted to introduce Mario Mocha, who is going to be the next athletic director at New Mexico State University beginning January 5th. I'm going to let Mario tell you a little more about himself because I start telling stories, and some of them are true and some of them are not so true, and then I start making up stuff. It's my political background that causes me to do that. <laughs> but, but I will tell you the important stuff is he is an Aggie. He's a graduate of New Mexico State University. <laughs> Has a bachelor's in psychology from New Mexico State University. He was a star baseball player here, and then he played some minor league baseball with Detroit Tigers. And then I'm going to let him explain to you his career, but it's an illustrious career in the business of being an athletic director. So would you please welcome Mario Mocha, the new athletic director for New Mexico City. Thank you very much for coming on, I know, short notice. Uh, I've, got, I've got many people to thank. Okay, I didn't want to scare anybody with the 25-minute PowerPoint presentation, but I do want to get through uh, a lot of have-tos. Uh, number one, uh, I want to say publicly thank you to President Carruthers for having the faith in me to lead such a wonderful and tremendous athletic department and, and, and institution as well. So thank you very much for having the faith in me. Uh, I certainly want to thank the search committee. Uh, I know they meant a lot. Uh, we read a lot about that in the papers and things like that, but the, uh, especially, uh, specifically the chairman, Larry Lujan, I want to thank. And then uh, obviously one of the greatest uh, college basketball coaches in history, and that's Lou Henson. So thank you, Coach, uh, for all of your work on that. Uh, so behind the scenes people that did a lot of work was Liz Ellis, uh, Angela Throneberry, and Jolie Touche. And I want to thank them too because they were running around on their days off on Sunday doing a lot of stuff, and I know they could have been uh, having some family time, but I really appreciate their hard work. Um, now, I tell you what, this is, a, uh, uh, this is a big day for me, okay, and it's a big day for my family. Um, in the front row here, uh, Heidi Mocha, okay, uh, this is my wife. Now, Heidi is the, yep. <laughs> Heidi is the uh, athlete in the family. She's a former first-team All-American soccer player at the University of Massachusetts, okay, and then she played overseas as well. So I never jog with her. If you ever see me jogging around town, it's by myself, all right? And then we've got two daughters. Uh, we've got Addie Marie, so Addie, stand up. She just turned seven years old and got her ears pierced. Big day, okay? And then uh, Gemma Gale, who is 20 months, 21 months, 21 months, I always want to say years old, but uh, she'll try not to wreck the press conference here, so... Well, Mom's going to do her best, but that's Gemma Gale, so I appreciate that. Certainly my parents, too, I have to thank. You know, they instilled in me what I believe is a tremendous work ethic. They're retired in Arizona, and I believe, and I think Heidi fears, that Las Cruces may be getting two new residents, but we'll see if, <laughs> if we get the parents out here. Um, you know, I also want to thank my mentor, Mike Alden. I work for a guy named Mike Alden for 13 years. He's the current director of athletics at the University of Missouri. And uh, I learned an awful lot from that guy. And uh, um, I, I really want to say thank you to him. Um, now, I first hooked up with Mike uh, when I was an intern at the University of New Mexico. And we refer to those as the dark period, OK, in my life, <laughs> the dark chapter. But I joke, um, I, I anx I'm anxious to work with uh, Paul Krebs. I know a lot of those guys, so we're ready to lace it up against them. But they're, they're a bunch of good guys. But we want to beat those guys pretty bad. Uh, now, uh, I tell you what, today uh, wouldn't be possible without uh, a very loyal and hardworking staff that I'm leaving behind. And I won't get emotional talking about those guys. But after nine years, you know, you, I had a lot of good people 
and uh, I know they're watching, and uh, I want to say thank you to all of them. I wouldn't be able to be standing here if it wasn't for their hard work, and especially my former boss, the chancellor. Uh, she's now the president of Northern Arizona University. We've just lost two, okay? Uh, Dr. Rita Chang, she's the president of Northern Arizona. She's a great, uh, a great influence on me as well, and I thank her. Uh, but that is what makes today a little bit bittersweet, leaving behind some special people. And finally, uh, I know the president did, but McKinley Boston, uh, I want to thank him. Maybe you guys can give him another round of applause for a decade of leadership <laughs> of Ivy Athletics. I, uh, I'm really excited today, not just from a professional standpoint, but from a personal standpoint. Um, you know, New Mexico State University is a tremendous institution. Uh, it's an institution that has a special place in my heart, and I think it's an institution that has a tremendous amount of potential from an athletic standpoint. Um, you know, I always tell people if, if I was given a time machine, you know, I would set it to when I was back here in school. I mean, I made lifelong friends, coaches, and uh, it, it's just a very special place to me. Um, I know some of my old teammates are here. Uh, Gil Padilla was a co-captain with me. Gil, raise your hand over there, would you please? All right. Jim Krupovage is back here, our center fielder. Benny Avalos is back there. I don't know who else am I missing. Um, I do hate to tell those guys. Am I missing anybody else who's here, our team? Um, these guys are all going to leave as uh, Aggie Athletic Club members before the doors <laughs> shut. Okay, so we're going to put it on those guys. Uh, but uh, we also have a tremendous amount of uh, coaches that came through here, and I owe a lot to a guy named Mike Ryan who took over a struggling baseball program and through hard work and through running the heck out of us made us believe that we could win and we won right away. Okay, also Elliot Avent, uh, tremendous coach here. And, you know, two of the assistants, uh, Scott Crampton and Keith Lytle, uh, meant a lot to all of us, and they did, a, they did a heck of a job molding me as a student athlete and as a person. Um, now, I just met with the entire athletic staff. We spent a really uh, good session together, talked, kind of laid out some things, uh, and I'm very anxious to, uh, to join the community. Um, I know there's a lot of work to be done on a lot of different things, but I will tell you, you know, we'll operate our athletic program on three core principles, and that would be academic integrity, social responsibility, and competitive intensity. We want to win in everything we do, okay? But those will be the three biggies. Um, and I'm going to ask, and we will ask personally, all the Aggie alums, the fans, the donors, and the letter winners to help us emotionally, financially, and by attending the ball games. Okay, we'll do that personally. That'll be a big thing on my agenda. Now, you know, I was talking to Coach Martin. We had a, we had a tough loss in football on Saturday, okay? Um, but we will be focusing on football, and we will make sure that they have the resources to compete at the highest level. Okay, it's going to take everybody's help. We're going to ask a lot of people in the community. We're going to ask a lot of alums all over the place. But that has got to be and will be a focus of our, uh, of our administration. I also talked to Coach Menzies. Um, basketball has always been the crown jewel um, of this institution. Um, it's, got a, it's got a great spotlight on it, and I look forward to working with him to make sure we keep our winning ways in basketball and take it up to some of those high levels that, that Coach had set back in the day. So I, I, I had a great time with him as well. Now, I want to tell everybody in this room a true story, okay? 25 years ago, to the month, there was two former Aggie baseball players who were hired to repaint the parking lot south of the Pan Am Center. We just parked in it right now. Now, it didn't look like it does now. Had all those little gravel pieces all around there, okay? And we got two brooms, and we got a little thing, we got a little, you know, a little tray we put our paint in, and we got two of those thin rollers, because you had to have the little thin lines for the parking. And that was our job. And you had to hand sweep this parking lot. I'm talking, you really had to put your shoulder into it. And then you had to hand roll it. And if you got a little rocks in your thing, you had to pick them out and they couldn't get, it was a pain. Okay. One of the former baseball players may have quit halfway through. But Gail, I'm not going to say who that was. Okay? <laughs> but thank goodness Coach Avent sent over a bunch of freshmen and we got the job done. But uh, I tell the story for three things. Um, number one, who would have thought that one of those guys painting that parking lot 25 years, uh, 25 years ago to the month 
would be named the director of athletics of such a tremendous institution, okay? Uh, number two, there is no job too big or too small for us in the athletic program, but we're going to need help, okay? And I'm going to ask for it, okay, starting today, okay? And it's also, it's time to roll up our sleeves and get to work. That's our entire coaching staff. That's our entire athletic administration. And that's our donors and our friends and our alums. We're never going to do it unless we all do it together, okay? But, Gil, that is a true story. You can, you can tell everybody that later. <laughs> I... Uh, I'm very excited and I'm very humbled to be your director of athletics. Uh, we will work very, very hard to make you proud of New Mexico State University and its intercollegiate athletic program. Come to the men's basketball game tonight. Those of you who are listening, come to the men's basketball game tonight. Um, you know, we're going we're gonna to focus on increasing attendance. We've got great seats available. Uh, thank you very much and go Aggies. media that's in attendance, do we have any questions? Do you mind telling me your name and your affiliation? Uh, Ugo Perez, uh, Department of Journalism, and okay, great. You know, how are we going to focus on uh, increasing attendance? Um, you know, we're going to do a lot of surveying. Uh, something we just did at my previous institution, we actually sat down and created focus groups with our donors and our season ticket holders, with our faculty staff, and with our students. We had separate meetings, we had pizza, we had some beverages, and we asked them, hey, why, you know, what are you hearing out there? What makes you come to a game? How are the game times? How is the entertainment? Um, we realize that the product has to be successful to get people excited. But we also want to create a value-added atmosphere pregame, tailgating, things going on during the game, things going on after the game. So I think the biggest thing is how to attack that issue is, uh, number one, ask our current folks and ask part of the community, hey, what do we need to be doing more? Hey, I'm an alum, but I haven't been back in a while, so I need to take the temperature of folks. But I'm telling you, I'm not going to, and you know, people maybe ridicule me, we're not going to accept that we can't win in football here. Absolutely not. We can win, and we're going to put things in place uh, to try to make sure that happens. But we're going to ask folks to help us, and we're going to ask them their opinion, and then we're going to implement as many of the good ideas we can on our budget. Ernesto. Ernesto Garcia, I have a pretty original question. So if able to get successful in all sports and attendance part, does this mean a chance for New Mexico State to move on in conference affiliation, maybe look uh, above the WAC and see what might be available? Sure. Well, uh, first of all, you know, I know Jeff Hurd, the commissioner of the WAC. I know Carl Benson, the commissioner of the Sun Belt. We're very happy to be in the conference, okay? We can't be putting ourselves in a position to be independent. But, you know, that's a good question, and as you know, the landscape is very unsettled. We just had a, a big earthquake a few years ago. Now there's these little rumblings, um, so I don't think anybody has a crystal ball, but I think if we can focus on what we can control, you know, if we can increase attendance, if we can win football and men's basketball games, if we can put ourselves in the best position possible, if there are moves on conferences and it makes sense, we just become that much more attractive. So, you know, we'll, we're, we're, we're very pleased with where we are and we're very thankful. But of course, uh, just like anything else, if there's opportunities, um, you know, we would always listen to those. Yes, ma'am. Hi, I'm Lauren Diagram with the Albuquerque Journal. Uh, you have a history of fundraising in your previous position. Can you talk to us a little bit about, um, <laughs> about what you bring from what you learned at Southern Illinois here in terms of fundraising for across the program? Sure. Um, you know, I started out in fundraising when I was working with the Lobo Club. All right, and we had to do that at Southwest Texas, now Texas State, and we raised well over $100 million at the University of Missouri, and I just left Southern Illinois where we did $83 million in athletic building. Um, you know, how will we attack that? Um, I never thought fundraising was, you know, higher mathematics. Thank goodness, if you saw my transcript here. <laughs> the press assures me that he hasn't dug too deep in my transcript. But I think the reality is I want to go to our existing supporters and in that, I want to ask them, who else do I need to be talking to? You know, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to know a whole lot of people off the bat. But, uh, you know, one of, the, one of the true stories is how, how we raised $12 million privately at Southern Illinois. When I first got there, there was 30 names on the list. And I said, I don't think this is going to get it done. And I went to three key people and I said, who else needs to be on this list? 
And you know what? That list grew to 150, and then it grew to 300. So by doing that, asking people who needs to be involved, um, I think the president's been very clear. You know, he wants the AD um, can't maybe primarily or necessarily be the only chief fundraiser, but that is a big part of an AD's job these days. You know, you've got to get out. You've got to spend time with the donors, you've got to cultivate relationships, and you've got to be able to make the ask. And I know that's what's expected, and, and that's what I've done in my background. So, you know, I'm anxious to start uh, meeting people, uh, not necessarily reaching for their wallet at the outset. Okay. Jason, Jason, Jason I'm now going to Facebook friend you, okay? All right. All right. Jason's been wanting me to be Facebook friends, and now, <laughs> immediately after this press conference, I will, I will accept you as a Facebook friend. But I hope you understand that I wanted to keep my mouth shut so I didn't get fired before I got hired. Well, you, you just mentioned um, you know, the, the, some of the responsibilities of an AD here. Does that mean, will you hire a deputy AD? And does that, can you talk about what that person might, what their responsibilities Sure. Um, I think it would be uh, incredibly short-sighted to come in and start making changes for change sake. I think uh, a good administrator, whether it's in the athletic program or part of the community or, you know, in, in business, will come and do some evaluation, you know, get the lay of the land, ask questions, things like that. Then I think we can see, you know, how can we set up the organizational chart, what might be best for us, you know, what does our budget look like, that's impactful too. So I haven't been prepared to come in here and say, hey, by the way, here's the plan I've been working on for New Mexico State. I want to get to know. New Mexico State athletics before I start making any wholesale changes, and I think we're prepared to do that. I have one for Jenny and Claudia. Okay. Um, can you just talk about was was hiring was was his tie to New Mexico State? Was that you know how important was that when you're trying to reach out to you know alums and stuff like that in the state? Well, it's always important to hire Aggies, and I do that with reckless abandon. Um, <laughs> We just hired a baseball coach that's an Aggie, but uh, that's not the primary condition. Uh, this gentleman uh, was one of 40 applicants. They were screened by a great search committee, uh, got into the final eight or nine, uh, then down to four. And in all those interviews and in all of the conversations we had with references, he seemed to stand out a little bit in terms of his ability to go out into the community to 